Um, it's there's going to be a, a virtual environment that you can um, get into and then sort of play around with what I'm about to show. So feel free to do that if, if you guys have laptops and whatever connection. Um, so I guess let's uh, let's kick it off. So my name is Kasun. So I'm actually part of a um, part of Solar.io. Um, I'm part of the APAC field engineering. Um, also with me is Sai. Um, I'm based in New Zealand. Sai is based in Singapore. So we're sort of scattered all around, all over the world. Um, so this uh, this workshop is going to be on powering API-driven microservices with an Envoy-based API gateway. Um, if you have no idea what uh, what Envoy is, then um, feel free to come and talk to us. We have a booth outside. Uh, but hopefully, uh, running through this workshop should give you some some sort of indication of what what it is. Essentially. Envoy is a L4 slash L7 based uh, proxy. It's a very lightweight proxy. You don't have to use Envoy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll pick up. It'll pick up. It's very oh, cool. So, yeah. yeah. So I'll just do that. And then yeah. you'll, you'll awesome. Cool. Um, so it's a um, L4 slash L7 uh, proxy built for cloud native um, ecosystem, right? Um, it's a it's a highly scalable, highly distributable. Um, very lightweight um, proxy. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of technologies that are being built on top of Envoy. Um, Solo.io obviously have built a, a couple of products on top of Envoy as well. Um, out in the open source world, there's uh, service meshes that's built on top of Envoy. Um, it's being used as a sidecar. Um, again. If any of these terminologies is new, uh, by all means, come and talk to us in the booth. We'll be happy to uh, explain all of these things to you. So what do we do at uh, Solo? We, uh, we sort of help you know, um, our customers with their application networking needs, right? Uh, what that means is service-to-service uh, -service type uh, communication by addressing a few things, such as uh, reliability, observability, security, of course, which is a, which is a, sort of a first class citizen, right, in uh, what we do, um, and extensibility. So we built all of these things into our product stack, uh, what we call Gloop Platform. Um, and it essentially consists of uh, two things. One is the API gateway, uh, which this workshop is based on. Um, and also something called service mesh. Again, if you're new to service meshes, by all means not to worry. Um, we can explain all of that stuff at the booth. Uh, we've, we've built an uh, enterprise product on top of uh, a open source technology called Istio. Um, it is a service mesh. Um, so this is sort of our bread and butter, right? Um, we're also kind of looking at ways to uh, optimized service meshes, and we've recently made some announcements uh, in partnership with Google, trying to build a sidecarless um, service mesh technology. Um, also for Istio, so this is going to be all part of upstream Istio. Um, Solo.io is, is uh, the company is uh, based in Cambridge, Boston. Um, it was founded in 2017 by Edith. And um, we've got a bunch of people who, who some of you guys may be familiar with. Uh, they're sort of in the open source um, world, and they're, you know, especially with uh, some of these technologies, they're, they're sort of uh, in the TLC, um, in the TLC um, committee, et cetera. Uh, Well-funded company, you know, um, we've, um, we've valued at one billion, obviously, unicorn, um, in double quotes. Um, so we, we're definitely a fast-growing, fast-growing company. So enough about Solo.io. We're gonna dive straight into the uh, workshop. So we we also have a um, an event um, around six o'clock um, drinks. So I highly encourage you to come and uh, join us um, if you're around. Um, if you guys wanna. You know, run through this workshop. 
with me, then um, there's a Bitly link here um, that you can that you can use. Um, any of you want to run through the workshop with me? Probably not. That's so good. Um, so we're going to quickly quickly run into this. So let me um, first of all explain um, a little bit about what we're trying to do here. All right. Um, so we're going to introduce um, API Gateway. I'm sure you, you're pretty familiar with API Gateways, you know, if you're working with APIs. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we've built um, the uh, Glue Edge API Gateway on top of Envoy um, as, you know, as the, as the proxy. Um, essentially, what that does is uh, we treat Envoy as the data plane. Right, this is where your sort of data requests uh, flow through. Um, but in, in the case of Envoy, you also need a control plane to configure um, Envoy. So Glue Edge, in this case, is a control plane for, for Envoy as a data plane. Um, and what we've done is we've built a whole uh, bunch of features on top of um, Envoy, right? Things like um, external authentication, so you can offload um, authentication, right? You don't have to build any of this stuff into your services. Uh, we've done rate limits, so you can apply rate limits, right? Um, depending on what sort of requests that that, uh, you, that you get. And most recently, we've also uh, introduced GraphQL at the edge. Um, what that what that does is it basically discovers your uh, RESTful endpoints. Right, so you might have open API um, uh, specification or compliant um, endpoints. We discover those um, automatically, and we create the uh, GraphQL schemas for you. So now you have a GraphQL endpoint at the edge um, that you, you know, your clients can, can talk to. Um, and what that allows us to do then is also apply authentication rate limits, you know, all the good fun stuff that you do um, for RESTful APIs as well. So you no longer need to run a, you know, external GraphQL server like Apollo. So um, there's some content here. By the way, this, if you want to play around this uh, with this uh, workshop, this is available until Friday. Um, so, you, you know, in case you're interested, uh, there's enough time for you to go through this. So this workshop is, um, is kind of broken up into three different um, stages, right? First, we'll try and see how we can deploy um, Glue Edge. Um, now, this is built natively for um, Kubernetes, right? So you, you can run, run in Kubernetes environments. Um, completely agnostic, so wherever you have Kubernetes, it can run. Um, and it can do auto discovery of your services, etc. You can also talk to legacy applications that may be running in virtual machines. So you can also do that, as well as uh, talk to any lam Lambda functions. So you can also discover uh, Lambda functions as well. And then we'll, um, we'll uh, go through some of the gateway features, right? We'll look at XTorth and adding security on top of it and see how we do that. And then uh, finally, we'll look at GraphQL, depending on um, the time. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's quickly go through this. By the way, this environment is uh, built on top of Instruct, so this is a virtual um, machine environment. Um, if, you, if you do want to play around, it, it'll be completely isolated. Um, there's also some, some content here that sort of explains um, what uh, Glue Edge is. Um, like I mentioned, Glue Edge is, is a control plane for Envoy, right? So you see this Envoy um, proxies here. Now, Envoy proxies are scalable, right? This is one of the beauty of, of this uh, topology. So it's completely independent of the control plane. I mean, you still need the control plane to configure these Envoy proxies, but it's completely scalable, right? Um, so depending on your um, request requirements, RPSs, you know, TPSs, Envoy proxies can scale however you want. Um, and the responsibility of the control plane is essentially to configure these, these Envoy proxies. 
So we're just waiting for the environment to load. Um, so we, like I mentioned earlier, we built a whole bunch of features for this control plane. Um, there is also a bunch of filters that we built um, on top of Envoy. Um, and the reason why we've done it this way is to keep those latencies pretty low, because uh, usually there's, there's latency requirements. You, you want to minimize that um, as much as possible. So we've sort of built uh, deep into the um, Envoy proxy itself. And these are custom, custom filters that we've built. Um, feel free to interrupt me at any point if you guys have any questions on any of this stuff or any of the workshop material that we're about to go, go through. Um, but we're just waiting for this environment to load. Any, any questions? We'll just pause here for a second. So it takes to this environment. It doesn't take it to, okay. Um, it should take you to a, some sort of link. What does it take? Oh, okay, interesting. Um, let me quickly try and load this in a I wonder if there's something wrong with the QR code in that case. Um, but if you use the, the bit.ly link here, um, then hopefully that, sh that should definitely take you to, to the link. We'll try and fix, fix this um, in the slides. Um, like I said, the, the environment will be up until Friday. So if you, if you guys are interested in any, any of this stuff, then uh, feel free to have a look. Um, it does take a wee while for the, depending on the connection. Is, is, is the NYP here is a low DAS or a cloud cluster IP, or is that a sidecar? So, um, no, it's not a, so it can run as a sidecar. Like I said um, earlier, it, 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 in Istio, it's, it is run as a sidecar proxy. Um, but um, no, it's not a load balancer. So you. Still need a load balancer in front of it, um, but it, it does a lot of the L4, L7 um, stuff. So you can add policies and um, auth policies and you know stuff like that. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of, um, if I sort of um, expand a little bit on Glue Edge, sorry, uh, on Envoy, um, there's, it's actually built on top of a filter chain. So there's a bunch of filters that the, your request will actually flow through. Um, so there's a bunch of HTTP filters, uh, TCP filters, that sort of thing. Um, so it's a filter chain, um, and you can you can pick and choose what you want to do with those those filters. Um, you know things like XTOLTH, right? Um, if you want to do authentication, that's you can plug that as, that as a filter in that filter chain, and that will allow you to um, do XTOLTH. Yeah. So Cilium doesn't come into the Edge uh, product just yet. Um, it's more for uh, the service mesh um, architecture. So we we support uh, enterprise Cilium as part of our Glue Mesh product. Um, also, we support uh, enterprise Istio as well. Um, even though those those two things are um, open source technology. Um, and we sort of use Cilium at the CNI level, right? So you can, um, you can apply some of the network uh, policies at the CNI level. Um, and also, I don't know if you've seen, eBPF is also another technology that, that we're looking at. And again, we look at these things, try to minimize the latency um, as much as possible for, for our end users. Um, so when you when it comes to service to service communication, so we try and reduce uh, a lot of that. Um, I don't know if that sort of answers the question. Um, yeah, my environment is definitely not appearing here. Probably be because of the connection. Let's let's see how we go. Um, 
Let me see if I can. About the architecture a little bit while we're, while this is coming up. Um, so if we look at the, the concepts here a little bit, um, fortunately the connection is not helping us. So um, what we've done um, as part of Glue Edge is to introduce a bunch of um, Kubernetes constructs, right? Um, and these are sort of very high level APIs that you can use to configure Envoy. Um, um, so there's gateways, virtual services, routes, um, upstreams, and secrets. Um, the top sort of th uh, two here, gateways and virtual services, allow you to define the routing table, right? When you have an incoming request, you probably want to have some sort of routing to a destination. So this is where you define your route table. Um, and as part of this, you can obviously introduce um, external authentication, TLS, uh, requirements, you know, um, uh, discovery, and, and whatnot. And there's also this uh, construct called upstreams. And this is a uh, Glue Edge specific um, CR that we write as we discover services in your, in, in your backend system. We also use this uh, for the GraphQL feature that I mentioned. So now we know all the services that are running in your uh, environment, and then we can figure out what those endpoints look like. So we use um, a mix of both to, um, to obviously configure GraphQL. Oh boy. It's um, definitely the, uh, the connection is not helping here. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I'll quickly talk about some of the deployment patterns as well while we're here. Um, actually, this might be a good, good place to also talk about things. So if we kind of expand the, the whole control plane, Glue Edge control plane, you know, it's, it's made up of a bunch of things, right? Um, XDS server. Now, this is essential uh, when you're working with Envoy because you need a control plane to talk to Envoy. And you do this via these uh, XDS uh, messaging or protocol. Um, so you need an XDS server for this uh, use case. Um, and then there is also, uh, part of the control plane is also a uh, translation engine. Um, this is for translating the, um, the Glue Edge APIs down to the XDS um, you know, specific um, to the Envoy specific uh, XDS messaging. So it does this uh, translation. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Um, is that working? OK, cool. Can I plug that? OK. Let's make sure that. Wait for the screen to show up here. Technical issues are always fun with these live workshops. Uh, by the way, for any of the technology, technologies that we've already you know, talked about, Envoy, STO, um, eBPF, Cilium, we run free workshops um, in the APEC region. We run them you know, weekly, on weekly cycles. Um, and a lot of these workshops also have a certificate attached to them, so you guys have the option of um, sitting through them and you know, gaining a certificate um, badge through Credly. 
Um, so I highly encourage you if you guys are um, new to some of these um, some of these technologies to kind of attend those workshops. Yeah, I think we're up. Awesome. Thank you. Um, cool. So let's uh, quickly go through here. So we're going to deploy um, one to thirty in Russian. Um, Glue Edge has a Glue CTL um, command line tooling as well that you can interact it with. Um, but you can also deploy Glue with Helm as well, um, which is what most of our customers use. Um, and you can plug that into your existing GitOps uh, pipelines. Um, so just waiting for it to. So it dropped. And the guys have walked out. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. These are fun, uh, fun live workshops. Oh, there we go. We're back. Um, yeah, just waiting for Glue to um, install here. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's make sure that um, things are running. Um, so that's the first stage. So we pretty much uh, deployed um, Glue Edge here. Now, out of the box, you can see that we also ship observability part of this, right? Um, it does come with Prometheus and Grafana dashboards um, that you can monitor um, Glue Edge control plane, both Glue Edge control planes as well as your upstream services. Um, and there's this thing called rate limit, so uh, it also comes with a rate limit service. Right, so you can do a lot of those uh, rate limit um, counters on top of that. Um, it's backed by Redis Cache, um, so you, now you can scale this, you know, the control plane um, in a high availability mode. Um, and it also has this thing called gateway proxy, and that's essentially the Envoy proxy. Um, so you can scale, um, you know, the control plane as well as the, the proxies. So let's um, go to the next part of it, which is just introducing um, authentication. Um, again, there's, there's a bunch of um, uh, descriptions here around um, what we'll be doing. So first we'll introduce traffic management, um, how you can do uh, routing. And then we'll introduce um, security um, on top of that. And we've also in integrated uh, OPA. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about OPA, but it's Open Policy Agent. So we've embedded OPA into Glue Edge as well, so now you can do authorization. Um, and that could be based on a claim, you know, um, a job claim. Um, and you can build all of these uh, authorization um, rules. So let's see how um, that works. I'm not going to go, you know, go through the whole. Um, just give in the interest of time. So we're just going to quickly deploy a sample application here, HTTP bin, um, as well as the Echo service. So two sample applications. Um, so you can see that. We've deployed HTTP bin and echo-v1. Um, I've already mentioned what the upstream resource does. Um, so it basically defines what the backend services are. Um, it's it's a one-to-one -one, um, correlation. Um, we'll take a quick look at what this upstream is. So this is the upstream uh, CR that we've created. And you can see the service name 
and the namespace of the um, of the service that we've deployed. Um, similarly, we can take a look at all the upstreams that Glue Edge has, um, you know, auto-discovered. Um, this is also a mechanism that that we built into Glue Edge, so you don't. So you can choose either you want, um, to to manage these upstreams yourself as part of any Git, GitOps pipelines, or you can auto discover these as well. Um, a lot of our customers obviously go down the GitOps um, route just because they have existing tooling um, to do that in house. So they they'll start managing these upstreams um, themselves. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is introduce uh, virtual service. I mentioned what this was earlier. So this is uh, introducing the routing table, right? This is how you would route your incoming request down to a destination or given destination. Um, in this case, uh, you could do domain-based routing. Uh, we, you know, asterisk obviously means that we allow for any domain. Uh, but then you can also specify a specific uh, domain. Um, and a matcher, I mean, the, these are, you know, uh, similar sort of concepts with other proxies that you've seen around. Um, and then the route action says, this is where I want to route all my um, requests um, to uh, the given destination, right? So in this case, it'll be the, the upstream that has been discovered internally by Glue Edge. Um, so let's supply there. It looks like it's supplied. Um, so now if we, just hoping the internet is okay. So you can see the HTTPB.org um, being served. Um, let's quickly skim through some of these stuff. Um, um, and then in terms of the matches, you know, you can you can define what sort of matching you want to do, right? Um, you can do header-based matching. Um, so in this case, it looks like the authority header. Um, and based on that, it'll route to a specific destination. And you can also have a fallback uh, route as well. So it's a catch-all route. Um, anything that's, you know, th that doesn't have this header will be um, served by this uh, upstream. So you can see that uh, the moment you, um, so internally curl will actually have the um, authority, right? Um, you can see that it's being served by the core service here. Um, yeah, let's uh, take a quick look at the gateways. So gateway was the other construct that I talked about, the Kubernetes construct. So out of the box, Glue Edge will create two gateways, right? One for list, uh, one that listens on HTTP bound traffic, and another that's um, TLS bound traffic, right? 443 um, incoming traffic. So based on a TLS. Um, so if, um, and then Glue Edge will also kind of stitch all of these things together automatically for you. So if you have specified a, a TLS um, in the virtual service, um, so you want only encrypted traffic, it'll actually use the, the gateway that is uh, bounded to 443 or um, whatever the TLS port is that you've bounded to. So let's... Um, quickly look at the, the actual content of uh, one of these gateways. So you can see that it's binding to any, any given address here on a port 8080. So this is the plain HTTP um, gateway, um, CRD. Um, and then there's, op there's options that you can add on top of things like managing what the access log looks like. Uh, so you can define a very custom um, access log. Um, and you can also, um, you know, if there's any gRPC requirements right at the edge, then you can also define those. Um, 
You can also do run the gateway in a hybrid mode as well. Um, so it can do both HTTP and HTTPS for you, uh, things like that. Um, the other thing um, that a lot of our customers have asked for is delegation. So if you have um, you know multiple uh, tenants within your organization um, who want to own a route table, right? As a as a development team, you might have specific requirements on on what these route tables look like. So you can own that route table, and you can basically delegate that, right? Um, so you can do um, kind of multi-tenancy within this as well. Um, so you know a, a team can own the route table and and what those upstreams look like, um, and the admin admin or the operator, um, the platform operator, can define uh, the virtual service, and Blue Edge will actually tie those things together automatically for you. So it uses this concept called the route table to do this. Um, so you can see the the route table here. Um, so this you know could be owned by by a dev team, um, and the, the virtual service uh, that can be defined by you know a, a platform team, and all they got to do is just um, add this delegation action. Um, so they can say you know, delegate all of this to this uh, to this specific route table that's running in the namespace echo, and then you can also add. Uh, Kubernetes are back on top of this, so then it's sort of uh, you have some sort of authority um, for these delegated actions. So let's apply that. Um, make sure that's applied. Um, you can, you know, you can label. There are tables as well. You can also do selector-based um, routing. So you can have like a, a label, and then you can also refer to those labels within uh, the delegated action. So that's just um, demonstrating that. Um, and you can also, um, so if you have specific requirements around A-B testing, right? You may have um, multiple versions of your service running, multiple um, um, you know, versions like V1, V2, what have you. Um, so you can label those versions and you can do A-B testing as well, right? Um, now in Glue Edge, you can use uh, what's called multiple upstreams. So you can actually group those upstreams together. Um, and then, you could do, you know, canary-based routing if you want to do 50% of the route that that should end up in version one of your service. You can do that. Um, so you can, you know, construct all these A/B type uh, type uh, scenarios and then canary-based uh, scenarios as well as you, or you know, in other words, you, if you want like dark launching, which is um, kind of uh, restrict you know a specific feature to a, uh, to a small set of users so you can test those features out you can also do that sort of thing here as well um, so let's run through that so we're just making sure the um, the CRDs have been accepted. Again, you can you can sort of use Glue CTL to do this, um, or we also write um, for some of the GitOps use cases. We also write um, a status at the end of these um, at the end of these uh, CRDs, right? Um, so let me just uh, quickly show that as well. Um, So you can see that we also write this stanza right at the end um, to show 
if this uh, CRD has been accepted by GlueEdge or not. So there's a couple of ways of verifying um, that the configuration has been accepted or not. Um, so let's, um, I'll show if I run this. It looks like I have. Um, let's see this sort of um, AB type scenario in action, right? So in this case, I'm just um, through a for loop, I'm just scaling the endpoint, and you can see that it's getting load balanced between two different versions here. Um, and you can choose you know, whether you want 50% of the traffic. Um, so you can do weight-based routing as well. You can choose 50% uh, of the traffic that should go into version one, or the rest uh, should go into version two. Cool, so that's the, um, that's the traffic management side. So let's take a look at the um, this adding security and authorization on top. Um, so we allow, um, you know, server TLS, right? So you can define um, uh, the uh, TLS to encrypt the traffic. Um, now, we're sort of highlighting here some manual ways of doing this, but a lot of the times you use some um, CA to, to do this, like set, set manager. Um, CA to manage all of these things, um, but essentially it should be the should be the same. At the end of the day, you basically get a TLS and you you inject this TLS in your virtual service. Um, so let's let's see that. So just creating a, a Kubernetes secret here, right, with the TLS um, key and um, CRT. And then in, um, in the virtual service, you can see that we've introduced a, um, a new section here called SSL config. So this is how you would introduce uh, TLS to your um, incoming traffic. Um, now, as, um, as part of this, if you have a CA as, as part of this secret, we also um, Auto discover this as a um, mutual TLS, right? MTLS. Um, so you might have some MTLS requirements, you know, at the, the client side. Um, if that was the case, then we also auto dis discover that um, as part of this uh, attaching of this uh, TLS. Uh, but essentially, it's um, it's now you know encrypted the the traffic. Well, let's see that in action, right? So you can see the HTTPS here. And clearly the browser's um, giving us a warning. It's OK because it's self-signed. Um, but that's, um, that's encrypted, the traffic. Um, you can also do the same thing. Look, uh, um, now, so that's one part to it. The other part is obviously you might have, um, you know, OIDC requirements, right, to uh, integrate it with an external IDP service, um, identity provider service. Um, so Glue Edge has uh, what's called um, offload authentication, right? So there's a separate service that handles the authentication for you. You no longer need to build this into your uh, applications. Um, and essentially what gets uh, send down to the upstreams, in this case, the backend services will be a access token. And we also transparently refresh the token in the, in the backend as well. Um, so you no longer need to worry about uh, building all of that stuff, right? So let's uh, see that in action. We're going to use key cloak uh, for this uh, specific scenario. Getting deployed in the back end. Any, um, I know we're probably going pretty fast there, but any questions on any of this stuff um, that we've talked about? If there's anything unclear, just uh, come and talk to us. All right. Yeah. 
So um, like so far, what we have done is most of all the important concepts that I want to highlight is the upstream concept. So upstream is actually our CRD. So what we have done is we deploy two sub services, Echo and HTTP service. That actually that is the community service. It's automatically discovered. So most of the times that uh, customers ask is, can we do what? What are the other upstreams that we can we can we can define? So we can define like um, static upstreams. That means that you have a fixed IP and host outside that you want to talk to. You can define that that uh, as a static upstream. And also we can you can use like a, you have like a lambda functions like AWS or Azure functions that are running, and we can define as as an upstream as a lambda functions that you want to talk to. And also like we have like a console or even AWS EC2. So the, uh, one of the takeaways that I want to highlight and, and uh, add on is actually the upstream concept that uh, we can do. So not only the Kubernetes service, but also the other upstreams that we can do. Yeah, thanks. Cool, thanks, Sai. Um, so let's go ahead and configure Klikok. Um, yeah, just make sure that it's created a bunch of users. And we grab the token. Um, right, did I actually create the token? Okay. Um, just make sure that it's got a token here. Cool. Um, and then we can um, inject this token. Uh, now you can see that, again, we're using GlueCTL, but you can also manage this within uh, Kubernetes native, uh, you know, secret CRD, right? Um, GlueCTL sort of allows you to do this, um, um, kind of streamline this uh, process of creating the, the secret. Um, and then, we're going to introduce this new CRD called authconfig. This is where we define our um, authentication policy. Um, what's happened there? Have we lost the connection? I think we may have. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we have lost the connection. Yeah, Wi-Fi connection. Oh boy. Yeah, the Wi Fi isn't great. It's, it's connecting my phone. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's just take it. So, yeah. all right, cool. Um, so, you can see the, um, the way we define the OIDC um, endpoint, um, the callback URL. So, once the authentication happens, this is the callback URL that uh, is being passed back with the, with the token, uh, client ID, client secret. Um, and where the issuer um, discovery endpoints are, um, and what the scopes are, what the header is. Once you uh, get back the token index, it can actually pass down to the um, to your applications as as part of this header. Um, and we can do some interesting stuff with this header, which we'll look at in the um, the OPA um, uh, step. Um, you could do things like, you know, claim-based um, validation, right? So you can inject these things as part of the header, and then in OPA you can say whether to uh, accept or deny the, the request uh, based on, you know, some policy that you define. Um, now in, um, coming back to the virtual service, and you can see the theme here, right? So we always interact with the virtual service a lot because that's where your routing table lives. Um, and in the virtual service, um, you define, you can define this XTOTH uh, policy now, uh, which basically refers to that auth config that we've created. Um, and then you can also do this based on a routing table as well, right? So you can, um, based on you know specific routing needs, you can you can define this uh, this XTOTH policy. Um, we also allow for custom authentication service as well, so you can build your own custom uh, authentication service if there's like specific requirements. Um, we also have um, you know those sort of capabilities built into Glue Edge, um, and then you can chain all of these together as well. Like 
if you have multiple authentication mechanisms, you can also chain them within Blue Edge. So the request actually goes through the chain um, you know, to, to validate as well. Um, all right, cool. So it looks like that's done. Let's um, I just just want to chime in because I uh, I was doing work for one of the customers. Um, for for the custom all, all use cases, let's say example, customer want to have like to want to preserve their IP addresses when they create the API key to consume. So that's where the custom authentication logic comes in that you can do it, or maybe you want to have. Uh, certain IP address uh, from certain side address that want to consume uh, uh, the, our, the API. Right? So that's where custom auth logic can create it. So you can write your own custom auth server and do the chaining including uh, with, together with our external auth server together. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so it actually prompts you for a username and password. So this is key clock prompting you, right? Um, so it's all already done part of the the auth uh, dance in the backend. You can see that we didn't actually touch any of our services, right? This is all done at the edge um, through these these um, configuration that we've been injecting, and it basically accepts accepts this uh, request um, through the authentication mechanism. Um, I'm not gonna. You go through all of this, i um, just going to skip right ahead to the OPA um, authorization. So in OPA, you can, um, you can basically define what you want to do uh, after you've authenticated, what you want to do with that request, right? Um, now in this case, uh, we basically look at the, the payload. Um, you, can, you, you, know, you can look at the header, you can look at the payload, um, even the signature. Um, and then you can decode, um, you know, the job based on those things. You can pull out those things, and then you can um, write all of these policies uh, based on what you pulled out, like based on the header, based on the payload, um, things like that. Um, so let's quickly show that in action. Um, just want to make sure that I haven't. Not to create this. Just going to quickly clean up some of the CRDs that we've deleted, um, created so far. Um, all right, let's go ahead with uh, the old config. So. Um, coming back to the auth config, you, like I said, you can chain um, some of these things, right, as part of your uh, authentication slash authorization. Um, so we've looked at um, introducing OAuth earlier. Um, you can see the new section that we've added, which is around the OPA policies, right, um, the OPA um, that we've introduced. So let's... Um, Let's see this in action. Just want to make sure that I've injected the OPA config. Um, so essentially, what what we're doing here is um, once it's done the authentication, it. Um, the, uh, the request goes into OPA, and in OPA we, we can look at the job, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we can look at a bunch of things, um, and then depending on that, we can set uh, certain attributes. Um, so in this case, we just, um, you know, we um, get the test, uh, we set the test as, as part of this OPA policy. And then uh, we look at if if this this test has passed or not, right? Um, so you can build build these these policies um, in OPA. 
Um, you know, it can be very com complicated at this stage, but uh, you know, for this uh, specific use case, we're just keeping it very simple. Um, so just going back to that, and you can see that um, it basically allows you to um, go through, and that's because we've we've logged in as user one. But if um, if on a different session we we log in as admin one, then obviously it's gonna it's gonna block out. So I think we've sort of run out of time. Yeah, um, I was hoping to kind of show you the the GraphQL stuff, um, but like I said, this uh, environment is up until until Friday. Uh, so feel free to you know play around with this, right? Um, and if you have any questions at all, we're we're just at the booth outside. Um, and we also do drinks at six, so feel free to come and talk to us around that time as well. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everyone.